Today, the topic under discussion is canine distemper, also known as heart path disease. Let us start with a brief introduction of today's topic. Canine distemper is an acute to subacute contagious febrile disease. It is a fatal disease with respiratory, urogenital, gastrointestinal, ocular, and CNS manifestations. This disease is caused by canine distemper virus, a mobili virus in the paramyxoviridae family. This virus is closely related to measles virus, rinderpest virus of cattle, and seal and dolphin distemper viruses. Canine distemper affects different species of the order Carnivora, which include Canidae, Hynidae, Mustelidae, Procyonidae, Viviridae, and Philidae. Let me now elaborate the pathogenesis of this viral infection. Natural route of infection of this virus is airborne and droplet exposure. The virus then enters from the nasal cavity, pharynx, and lungs. The macrophages then carry the virus to local lymph nodes where viral replication occurs. Within one week of the infection, viral shedding occurs and virtually all the lymphatic tissues become infected. The virus then spreads via viremia to the surface epithelium of respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urogenital, and lastly to the central nervous system. Here we have a pictorial elaboration of how this virus affects the different systems. As you can see, firstly the, lymph the replication occurs in the lymphatic tissues. The infected macrophages then carry the virus to the blood circulation where mononuclear cell associated viremia occurs. The virus then reaches the brain and firstly perivascular infection and then periventricular infection takes place. The infection via olfactory nerve can also reach to the piriform lobes of the brain. Some of the major clinical signs of the disease include fever for one to two days and lymphopenia. These may be the only findings during initial period of the disease. Further disease progression depends on the virus strain and the host's immune response. If there is strong cellular and humoral immune responses, the host may remain subclinical. In case of weak immune response, subacute infection is seen. In this scenario, the host may survive longer. If the immune system fails to respond, acute death of the host within two to four weeks after the infection is seen. In this case, convulsions and other CNS disturbances are also observed. Viral excretion can occur up to two to three months. One of the most important clinical findings of the disease is biphasic fever. The first peak, the first peak of the fever is seen three to six days after infection. It may pass unnoticed. However, the second peak it occurs several days later, usually associated with nasal and ocular discharges, depression, and anorexia. Gastrointestinal and respiratory signs then follow, often exaggerated by secondary bacterial infection. The central nervous system is affected in many infected dogs after systemic disease. This depends on the virus strain. It can either be acute, gray, or white matter disease. In case of gray matter disease, dogs may die in two to three weeks. Some dogs recover, others progress to develop the white matter disease. In white matter disease, some dogs die four to five weeks after initial infection with non-inflammatory demyelinating disease. Some dogs may recover with minimal central nervous system injury. Optic neuritis and retinal lesions may occur. Enamel hypoplasia of the teeth is seen in canine distemper. Some important pathognomic lesions of this disease include hyperkeratosis, which includes the hardening of footpads and nose of the animal, chewing gum fits, and tetraplegia. The diagnosis of the disease is usually based on clinical signs. CBC, biochemistry, and urinalysis are some of the diagnostic methods. In distemper, lymphopenia during early infection and intracytoplasmic inclusions in WBCs and RBCs are observed. Serology as it has limited value, as the positive antibody tests do not differentiate between the vaccination and exposure to viral and virus. Patient may die from acute disease before neutralizing antibodies even produced. Radiographs may determine the extent of pneumonia caused by the virus. CT and MRI may also not disclose lesions. MRI in particular is sensitive for visualization of demyelination. The differentials for the disease include kennel cuff, which can mimic the respiratory disease in enteric form, differentiate the virus from canine parvovirus, coronavirus infections, giardiasis, bacterial infections, gastroenteritis, and inflammatory bowel disease. In nervous form, differentiate the disease from autoimmune meningoencephalitis, protozoal, fungal, and rickettsial meningoencephalitis. 
let's now discuss the treatment of the disease antivirals are not known to be affected the medication includes the use of broad spectrum antibiotics to reduce to reduce the secondary bacterial infection because canine distemper virus is highly immunosuppressive ampicillin tetracycline and chloramphenicols are very good choices the use of anticonvulsant therapy is also ne- necessary phenobarbital potassium bromide these can be used to control seizures corticosteroids are effective but remember to use anti-inflammatory doses with caution the use of steroids may provide short term control however immunosuppressive doses may enhance the viral dissemination the prevention and control of the virus include isolating puppies to prevent infection from wildlife or from infected dogs modified live vaccine of canine distemper prevents infection and disease two types of this vaccines are available number 1 canine tissue culture adapted vaccines and number 2 chick embryo adapted vaccines kill vaccines are useful for species in which either type of modified live vaccine is fatal recombinant vaccines of canine distemper virus include canary pox recombinant vaccine duration of immunity from these vaccines vaccines is over 3 years 